Hello everyone, good morning. Good morning, thanks for joining me. My first live for 2021. So uh, the first of many this year, I'm so looking forward to it. I have missed doing it, although it was really nice to have a little break at Christmas. So I am back, I have a really fun project for you. So if you are with me this morning, please send me a comment. I am on my iPad here, so I am going to get my comment set up. There it is, so that I can see you guys. Okay, here we go. Ruthann, good morning. Thank you. It is really nice. Uh, hi from Germany. Wow, good morning. Kathy Pierce. Hello, Happy New Year. Happy New Year, you guys. Um, happy 2021. And you know what? I don't have a snowy project for you this time. So I'm about over the snow, although uh, we don't have any snow in Oregon. Uh, not very much snow in Oregon, but we have had a lot of rain. So I'm ready for something other than winter. So I hope you guys are too. Uh, hi from Virginia. Hi from Florida. Oh, I bet it's nice down there. Hi from Naperville, Debbie Lewis. Wow, you guys, thanks so much for joining me. This is just the best. Hi, Debbie Hedges. Teresa from Colorado, good morning. Good morning, good morning to all of you. How many of you did watercolor over the holidays? How many of you did projects? More than one. And how many of you actually watercolored your Christmas cards? because um, I would really like to know that. Illinois, Mary Jo, Kathy Warren, hello from Kentucky. You know, uh, watercolor, it's, um, especially this technique, it's very therapeutic. You know, when you've had a really stressful day and you can come in and pull out your markers and pull out your watercolor stamps, even if it's just a few of the small ones, like it really takes your stress level down really does. And for me, because I am all about um, having things at my fingertips, when I can just pull a few things out and create something, like that's a big deal for me. I don't have to search in drawers and look. That just makes my stress level go up. So <clears throat> when I have a few things that I can pull out and work on, um, that makes it so much better. Renee Matarese, hello. Vicki McCormick and Julie Elliott, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much. Ruth Ann, Ruth Ann, I know you were watercoloring. You were watercoloring. Tammy Fleetwood did all Christmas cards in watercolor. Wow, good for you. Don't people just love that? You know, <clears throat> sending something like this, well, first of all, they, they will not believe that you painted it. They'll think that you are a fabulous artist and has kept it a secret. Uh, but they don't throw that away. And how many of the people that you send these cards to actually say they're going to frame them? I bet a ton. Diane Mason, hello from California. Kathy Bryant, hello from Texas. This is so cool. Hi from Virginia, Kathy. Hello to all of you. So I, uh, I am back to the new release. So I kind of, you know, had a a break because of Christmas and doing all the Christmas projects. I did try to incorporate some of the new stuff in there, but I am going to go back to the new release and um, especially the simple scenes this time and walk you through some different techniques so that you can see exactly what to do with them. And then I'm gonna continue on with that for a few weeks. Um, I didn't really get a chance to use everything, so I really wanna go through all the different sets and be sure that I use everything so if you have questions, you can ask me. So be sure to do that on here. I do check the questions, you know, um, to make sure that I am answering your questions. Give me your thoughts, tell me what you love, tell me what you wanna see, tell me what you don't love. I'd like to hear that too. Uh, more Bible journaling. Yes, I am going to do those videos too. So if you are interested in Bible journaling, um, check me out on Instagram. It's Bonnie Krebs Bible Journaling. I have also been on a break from Instagram. So I will be back on that full force now that uh, January is here. I do have a lot of things planned for Bible journaling. So um, as well as the new sets <clears throat> for that. So I will be showing samples and um, I will be doing tutorials on that as well. 
So, and remember Bible journaling, uh, it's for any journaling. So it is, you know, um, the technique started with Bible journaling. That's something that's close to my heart. But for those of you who maybe just want to journal in a, in a, um, a regular journal with regular paper, you can do that. You just have to prep your page. So check out those tutorials on how to do that. And um, you can actually watercolor on any kind of paper. I have tried it on many kinds of paper and have had the best results, just the coolest things. And there are some tutorials on Facebook also that are archived about um, watercoloring and prepping your page and watercoloring in a journal. So you absolutely can do that. Um, Yes, I will. Heather Parsons' uh, Instagram name is Bonnie Krebs Bible Journaling, but we will put it in the in the comments too. So I will answer that in your comments. Bonnie Krebs Bible Journaling on Instagram, and uh, there are lots of posts on there already. But I will be hitting that really hard now in January and getting some new um, some new projects and some new tutorials. You guys, I'm ready to do some more tutorials. I've had weeks off, and I'm ready to get back to the watercolor. So let's see, let's see all the news. Could you please alternate with older stuff? Yes, absolutely. And that is always on my mind. So as soon as I get through these new things, you know, the basic information on the new things, I will incorporate some of the old stamps. And, if, and actually I did that on this, this tutori tutorial as well. I pulled out um, a basic image from one of the old sets. And, you know, keep in mind, you know, when I create these new sets, I always have that in mind, that you can take what you have and incorporate it with the new. So everything is made to build on what you have. So it's not like now that you've bought that set and used it, now we're going to put it, you know, um, in the drawer and never pull it out again. So that is not the case. Everything is meant to build on each other and build with what you have. Okay. Hello from Stockton, Karen Kelly. Hello to, to you in Stockton. Okay, it's about 10.05, so uh, I think uh, we should get going here. And like I said, be sure to leave me your comments, and then I will get back on here at the end so that if you have any comments or you have any questions, um, feel, free to, um, feel free to leave me those questions. Okay, are you guys ready? Let's get going with our project. I'm gonna move my, my uh, phone, so bear with me here whilst I get this flipped over. And I'll try to put it on here without disconnecting everyone. That would be a disaster. Okay, I think we are good. So here is the project. Just always make sure I get this on here straight and close enough. And you know, if it is a little farther farther away, I will try to hold it up after each step so that you can see and um, try to make sure that I stay inside the frame. So here is the project. Here's the here's the set I'm using now. I I just love these simple scenes. Give me your feedback on these because um, the point of it is to help you with perspective, but. Even these simple scenes that have everything in them and seem to be all, you know, all inclusive, you can change these up so much. And uh, I, this is what the tutorials are for, so that I can show you different ways that you can use this. Now, in this tutorial today, now, if you look at the sample on here, see how small these little structures are? The smaller the structure, the larger the road, okay? So if you just kind of keep that in mind, you know, when the when the buildings are small and tiny, the road becomes bigger and more of a substantial road. Now, in our project today, the structure is much bigger. And if you look at this now, um, it looks like a driveway, doesn't it? So the larger the structure, this becomes smaller, more like a path even, or a little driveway, or, you know, not a big highway, obviously. That's not a big road. So uh, keep that in mind when you're doing these. You can lose, use lots of things. So like I said um, earlier, I do like to go back and pull out things from the past. And that's what I did. I grabbed this barn from before, <clears throat> but you can also use things like this. So any of these larger um, little houses, these will all work. Any of these little, um, 
you know, rustic cabins, these will all work. Everything like this barn will work with these simple scenes. So just because it shows you, you know, on the, on the illustration that you need to use it with these little structures, uh, that's not the case. You can use it with lots and lots of different things and it, it really will change up your image a ton. And if you kind of look at it that way, you'll start seeing it that way. And you'll see that the fence comes forward. You'll see that you can set things back into the background. And basically it's just to help you get perspective and see where things would go on here. So if the if this is helping you, uh, let me know because I, I would love to do more of these things. They're so much fun. I did um, several already on Facebook. And looking back at them, I realized... <laughs> <laughs> that I really mostly used the little creek with the stones. Uh, that was not intentional. So I'm now going to go back, make sure that I've used all of them so that you get the idea of how to use them all. I really, really like this one with the fence because it does also help with the perspective. But keep in mind that you can do this, you can color this and leave the fence off if you want to. You can also use the fence by itself. So if you have something, you need a little fence across the front, uh, use this little fence. So uh, always keep that in mind when you're using these things that you you don't necessarily have to use it as a whole. It can be used for lots and lots of different ways, okay? Uh, so I am going to do this. I'm gonna show you how to do it with this. Uh, we're gonna create this little path. I'm gonna use this little girl and her dog and then create a little, just a subtle little foreground here. I love this idea because you don't have to um, completely finish the picture. Now, if you want to do that, what I would suggest is give yourself a border. Use some post-it notes or post-it tape and create a border for yourself. You know, just a square and that brings your um, your image in and you have a definite border. But if, you're, if you um, are a little um, unsure about how to do things without a border, where to end things, do a simple little foreground like this. It is so easy to do and just really, really um, super fun. We're also going to use the mask pin on this fence. So in the past, We've used the mask pen, mask pen by itself, or uh, you know, for snow, or you know, something white in the background. Now, in this case, we're going to put it right over the top of the fence. So I'm going to show you how to do that as well. Um, what else are we doing? I'm going to show you the background, obviously, and the new trees. Uh, just really, really, really simple. Now here, I did it again, and I turned it. So. Let me, you know, hold these back and forth. See how this one is, you know, the horizon is flat. Now, if you turn it and tip it a little bit, you see how that goes uphill? So uh, another really simple, fun things. It just changes things up and gives it a little more interest. Also, I changed out the trees and I used the mountain stamp and just stamped that into the background. So here's the basic image again, but you can see that you can add more to the background you can change out the trees and you know easily change out the seasons. Like that would just be super easy to do. And again, uh, I used the masking fluid on here so that I protected this fence. So uh, I'm going to show you how to put this together. Really, really easy. I'm sure you can do it. And uh, let me show you what else we're gonna use. So in addition to the watercolor fence scene, so this is a simple scene 5377. Uh, this is the one we're going to use. In addition, I went back to the truck set, the mini truck set, and I took this barn here. Grab that. And then I'm using the new mini foliage. Okay, so if you have not used this set, uh, it's very inexpensive, and this thing is so great. I absolutely love it. And you know what? If you've never done watercolor before, you would look at this and go, what in the world are all these things? But they are so great, and they work so great. And we're going to use several of them. So we're going to use the two trees, the right and the left. We're going to use this little background foliage. We're going to use the leaves here. And um, this is the tree that I used in this, in this illustration here. So I just switched the trees up. That's basically the only difference. And then I stamped the mountain in the background. So really, really easy to change that up. I'm also using this tiny little grass. So when you're doing things in the background now, you really do need to have short, tiny little things to give you the impression of the grass in the background. So all of these things you will just use over and over and over again. So 
we're gonna use that. Uh, the fences on here, also my favorite. I love them, they work great. And don't worry about stamping things off. Now, I, I stamped this one, tapped it in, I didn't quite get the rest of it, but I really like how it looks. It looks like it's kind of coming down over a hill. It sort of fades out. Uh, it's not a mistake. It looks really, really cool. I love that about it. So you have lots of options in here. Now I put the little girl and the dog in here, but you could also put the cows, the cows in. That'd be so cute. You could put this little windmill in. So you could also use the tiny barn in the background. So you can see how that would change things up. That would make this road much, much bigger, much bigger. Okay, so I'll, uh, obviously the silhouettes, so this little girl and the little dog, I'm using those two. And then in flower set four, I'm gonna use this guy. So that is this red flower right here. And then uh, this foliage right here in foliage set four. So again, this does not need to be these two stamps. Uh, it can be any, any stamps. It could be any vine, any flowers, whatever you want. You're just putting a little bit of it, sort of like it's hanging over that little path or over that driveway. And you're just giving the idea that there's a big, something big in the foreground because this leaf is much larger than this leaf here and this one. So it's progressing forward, big, medium, and tiny back here. Okay, so all that being said, let's get to work. Let's get to work and get started on this little project. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to stamp the basic uh, image. So let me, this is bugging me, that's crooked. Okay, I think that's good there, actually. Okay, I think we're good here. That bugs me if that isn't straight on here. Okay, that's the type A part of me that's coming out, so I do have a little bit of that. Okay, uh, let's get going here. We're gonna start out by stamping the, uh, the basic image, and that would be the big image. And I now have my actual stamp. So I've been using my old prototypes. Uh, every time I do, um, Every time I do a tutorial with these. So now I actually have the stamps. We have them in stock now. All of the watercolor stamps are now in stock. So I am using my actual stamp here and it is so great. And you know, I have been asked about why I've gone to clear on these. And really the reason is that you can see through it. It is so much easier to th see through it. And you know, sometimes uh, when you're stamping with the watercolor, it may look like the lines are broken. Um, you are going to have a much better result with broken lines than you are with straight, uh, heavy, heavy, wide um, lines on these things. And that's part of the reason I do it that way is because I want it to look loose and I want it when you add the water to it to look like it is sort of... Um, a look more like a watercolor image. So that's why. So when you stamp this and it looks like there's a line broken and maybe you think that it's not stamping well, you are going to get the best results uh, with that actually, okay? So let me um, let me start out by inking this in, in this color first. We're gonna go through, we're gonna ink the fence. And I'm just gonna take the side of my marker and I'm going to ink, ink this up here. And I'm just gonna use the brown. Just the brown. Now I'm going to come through on the path and I'm gonna use a green. This is a 177. Now this line, I'm gonna use the whole line here and maybe just a little bit here. And then as it comes around like this, I'm gonna leave a little space because I want that, you know, I want that foreground to kind of come through. So I'm just gonna leave a little space here. And then the rest, I'm gonna do really, really light with this N89. And this is meant to be very, very light. So I'm just going over this now with, with this, and then I'm going to stamp it onto my watercolor paper uh, straight right about in the center. And don't press too hard, just get a good even um, impression on here. And this is exactly what it should look like. This is exactly it. You see how light that, for, that background is? You want to barely see it. It's just a guide. It's a guide to tell you where the hills are in the background. You don't wanna see these dark lines behind your image. When you stamp a little structure in here, you don't wanna see these dark lines. And see how broken the lines are in the fence? That's what we're looking for. That's what we're looking for. So this is exactly it. And I also like the variation of color 
because anything that looks the same, that is stamped the exact same with heavy lines is not going to look natural. It's just, it's just not. So um, let's get going here. So I'm gonna, the next thing I'm gonna do is stamp that barn into the background. And this is it here. And I'm going to use my positioner, my little positioner. Place my little acrylic shield in here. So if you've never used one of these, um, these are just the greatest little things uh, because it will help you place everything where you want it to go. So I, oops, and I did the brown first. Now normally I would do the blue first and then the, um, and then the brown, uh, but in this case, I messed up and did the brown first, but you know what, it doesn't matter. Now also, uh, another thing that, let me just tell you, um, your blue, this dark blue, 565, will get brown on it. So when you're adding, when you're doing this, now you can either clean it off. What I've done now is I have two. I have one that I use when I ink my basic image, and then I have one that I use uh, just for my florals and my sky and everything else. So that way I don't get, uh, I don't get it muddy because it is going to get muddy. You can take it and just scribble it off you know, onto, you see how muddy that is? Let me hold this up. See how muddy that is on here? Um, it just, it, it distorts the blue. So you can either scribble it off until you get all of that uh, gray off of there, and then you've got the blue again, or um, you can do what I do and just get another blue, just so that you have for that. Okay, so now I'm going to stamp this in the color, or in the pff, color, in the corner, and I'm going to place this where I want it. And I think that's probably good right there. Just make sure it's straight. Place that back in. And then we can stamp this right into the background, not too heavy, pretty light. And then um, we've got our basic image in here and you see how that road comes behind here and we have the structure already. So the hard part's done. Now it's just the fun part of filling in filling in the flowers and the foliage and everything else. So now let's go to the mask pen. So this is this is a Molotov, this is called a mask pen, and it just contains masking fluid. And what it does is it protects the areas so that when you stamp over it, uh, you don't stamp over the top of those fence posts. It's kind of like skin, liquid skin. So I'm going to um, just pump it, make sure that it's ready to go. Got a little pump tip and then you're just going to color on this fluid onto the post now you can also make this fence bigger and go longer with these posts with your mask pin now and it's going to bleed a little bit because it's they're both water soluble so you're going to have a little bit of a bleed but it, it's not going to make a difference so don't panic if you see that, you know, getting black, your masking fluid kind of getting dark. Uh, get it on thick enough so that nothing shows through. And then it will dry in just a few minutes. But in the meantime, we're going to go ahead and finish up our um, little barn here. So of course, the first thing we're going to do now, you see, you see those lines back there, they're really a non-issue because they're so light. So that's gonna wash out. As soon as we add some color to this, those lines are all gonna wash out and it's not gonna matter. So we just need it to be able to place, place that barn. So I've dipped my brush in water now and I'm pulling the color out of the lines. I always start with the overhang. I don't know why, you don't have to, but I just do, kind of as a habit. And then I go to where I think it's the darkest, so the shady side. And this always kind of gets things going. Drag this color out of the line, out of the lines. Be sure to leave a highlight at the top. You want to see the light coming off, you know, off of the roof. And when you have different uh, white spaces, it gives you the idea that the roof is um, textured, that it's not completely flat and smooth, that it's kind of old and bumpy and... Um, it gives you the, the impression that it's not new. So leaving those white areas really does, really does make a difference. So let's add some color now. And I'm gonna add some green to my palette. This is the 177, so the warm green. 
Gonna add this and then uh, some of that dark brown. And I'm just gonna mix these two together just a little bit. I just want kind of a mossy colored roof. So not really brown, but not really green. Just something that looks kind of weathered and old. And see, I'm leaving that, leaving that highlight on the top. And on the on this edge. See that little edge right there and here. Just leave that light. You're gonna be so much happier with how it turns out if you do that. Okay, so let's let that dry a little bit. And I'm gonna come in now and really darken those windows. I'm gonna use my fine tip. This is my twin tone. And this is the dark blue. And I think I'll just add one more window here. And just really, really darken these. They don't have to be perfect. And you can, you can actually add, you know, some brown to it as well. So let's do that just to mix up the color. Add a little brown in here. But when you darken these, you know, the entrance to the barn, it really, it really changes the look of it. And, you know, you can go under here too. Make this darker in here. Maybe under there. And then I'm just gonna get some of this color and just kind of soften that out. And you can just kind of drag some of this color down. You know, when, you, um, when you've got an old structure like this, you know, it's better to kind of mess up the white so it doesn't look completely white. You know, there's always gonna be shadows you know, from the sky, it's never going to be bright white. And the goal, I say this all the time, is to make it look like a watercolor because you can be a watercolor painter. We're just doing it a little different way, but you're all learning to be watercolor painters. And I love how, how you, so many of you have taken this and make it made it your own. And I see some of your samples and I'm just blown away. And I look at it and think, I never thought to do that. I've never thought of that. And I just love it because you put your own take on it. And even though you're using stamps, it's your own creation. That's why I make you sign it. I say sign it all the time because it doesn't matter that it's stamps. Every time you make one of these little projects are gonna be different. Love that about it. Okay, so you can see how simple that is. I mean, it's it looks a little blotchy, but I think that makes it look more realistic so that it doesn't look like a stamp, you know, which is exactly what we're going for. So now let's continue on here. And we're gonna put in some of this background back in here. And I think I'm just gonna use some uh, light color. Here's the, here's the cool, cool green, the 249. So I'm just gonna put some of this color on here. I've got some blue on there and I've got this green. So I can kind of, you know, follow along um, these little hills. And then I'm gonna start out by just using that little foliage um, in the background, this one here. I love, love this little thing. It works so great and it just kind of creates these hills in the background. So I'm gonna take that, that cool green And I'm just going to kind of stamp it along the hill, you know, a little bit like this. And then, you know, maybe a little bit back here. And then maybe one more up here. So you're, I'm just kind of following those lines, you know, where they go. And this one actually comes back down. Now, let me show you something with this because um, this little thing is so great. Now, if you want a taller one, you're going to tap it twice, like this. You can also tap it in and go behind it and get a little lighter image in the background. So you're also not just stuck to this exact size. Okay, try that. Try going a little taller. Try going a little to the left. You can go over and then back over again, okay? So I've sort of created my little background in here. So now I'm going to take my brush 
and soften this all up. We've got this little hedge. You can also, you know, color half of it and do a much smaller one. So use your imagination and try different things. That's how you make it your own. And I just think so much of it is confidence. You know, when you start out kind of following the rules and doing it the way I do it, uh, and then as you get your, um, your confidence, you start making it your own. And you'll be amazed. So now I'm going to take some of this uh, little this green. I'm just going to kind of darken this in a little bit. Just kind of fill this in. We could pull some of this color down. <clears throat> then let's add something into the background. Now you can just keep going with these hills in the background. Let's just put one back here. This is just a blue. I mean, it's just, it's so simple. Just so simple. Start out, you know, light. You can always add more color to it. So um, much better to do that. Much better to start out light. And I'm just gonna add a little more color in here now to this. And this line, remember we colored this in the green, so we've got some green coming out uh, coming out of here too. Okay, starting to take shape. So let's go ahead and add some uh, trees in here. <clears throat> these are the two, the right and the left, that are in that tree set. Um, I love these little guys. Now you can do the tree trunks in the brown or you can do them in the green, totally up to you, or you can do them in a mix. So you can do two colors but they just work great. They're small and they just fit uh, right in here. And let's do, let's just do one more over here. Just tap it in. And this little guy, he can go right here. And then the foliage that comes with it. So let me show you that because it looks like a, just a little blob, but it works so great. This is the actual tree, the foliage, and you really only have to tap it in there one time. So let me show you. And you can go either direction. So it can go on your block like this, or it can go on your block like this. Okay, either way. And I'm just gonna ink it. like so, and you can tap it in like this, and like this. And then you can turn it, so you can turn it the other direction. Whoops, that's the same way. You can turn it the other direction like this, see, and go the other way. It's so easy. I mean, it is just, it's just the easiest thing to do. And it's fun. When you make it easy, you take the stress away. Okay, so now we're adding the water to it. You see how that, see how that brown blends in? I love that. It adds a little more dimension to the tree and mixes that color up. Same with this one over here. You know, you don't have to do a lot. Just touch it. The, you know, the foliage will do its thing. It will totally do its thing. You don't have to do anything. So let's get some grass in here, a little bit of grass. And I'm going to use that tiny, that little tiny grass for the, um, in the background. This little guy just works like a charm. And you're going to tap it in there just like you would uh, the other, the other grass. You see how much smaller that is. See how this tree looks like it's kind of coming down a hill. Let's just do that. Let's just bring this down. See how that just looks like it's coming down. 
uh, every, anytime you can do that, um, rather than make everything straight, it just adds a little more interest. It just adds a little more interest to your, your composition. And then, of course, we're going to just come through with a little water. Uh, just nothing to it. Okay, so let's go on to this little fenced area right here. And we're going to use the grass. We're going to use the actual grass. Now, this is from the foliage set, and I should have shown that in the very beginning. But this is from the foliage set one. So this is actually the tiny grass that you've probably used a billion times. I know I have. And we're just going to go over the top now of this fence. You know, and I think I, you can hang this grass over a little bit. You know, see how that kind of just comes out over the fence? Anything that can give it a little more interest. And I might just actually just bring this over a little bit more. And the, um, the masking fluid is, you know, protecting our fence. So um, you don't have to worry about that. And you can, you know, drag some of this color down, you know, to the bottom. Totally easy to do. And now let's add some flowers back in the background. And I just, you know, you can use any. So I use this tiny one. I should, should have showed that in the beginning too. This is the, <laughs> this is from the, uh, the mini flower set. So the very small, tiny little flowers. But you can use anything in here. Absolutely anything. You can use the little dots. You can use the filler flower, um, anything. And then of course, any color. You can use any color. And I'm just going to kind of um, add these in like this. Add a few in here like this. Maybe hang a few over. And then maybe take one of these, um, the little tree, and just ink it. And maybe add, you know, a larger one here in the center. And now I can go back and add um, these little flowers to it. So it just looks like a, a little bush uh, in behind the fence. And then maybe a few down here. And then, you know, if you want to kind of continue this into the background, uh, you can add just, just ink the tip, just the very tip, and just put a little bit back in here. And now you can just kind of, you know, blend this all up. Now, do you see these real thin lines of the fence? That's okay if we lose those lines because we're going to just put those back in. So don't worry about that. When you add, you know, add water to this, you may lose those little tiny fence lines. And you can see I'm not, I'm just dabbing a little bit so that I don't lose um, the shape of the flowers, but yet I'm, I'm blending it out. Okay, so let's go on now and do our little um, foreground here. And I'm just going to turn my, turn my page so that I can get this stamped in here. And here's my little foliage I picked. <clears throat> and you just, you just have to just kind of stamp this in here, kind of over the top you know, like this, and then just maybe one more uh, down here like this, just to give it the idea, just the idea. And then let's go ahead and just stamp the flower in. Here's that little flower from that, um, that little mini flower set. And I'm just gonna use a red. You can use any red, this is 885, but you can use any red. And then uh, the stem, green. And then maybe let's put it in here a couple of times. And again, maybe let's go a little farther out like this. And maybe just one more 
uh, in here. And that's really all you have to do because you can clearly see that that is a bush and it's kind of hanging over the top. And this whole area is really hilly. We've got a hill here, we've got a hill here and here. So we've added a lot of dimension to this. It's not just a flat image. And you know, really you don't have to add a lot of water um, to this foliage because it's pretty defined. If it's in the foreground and it's large, you're gonna see the leaves. You know, these leaves back in the background, we're not gonna see those individually because they're so far away. But these in the foreground, you know, we may see those, the actual leaf. So you don't have to do a lot um, with this. Just a little bit, just soften it up just a little bit. So let's go ahead and put in the fence. A little fence is just so easy. And I'm just gonna ink it in the brown. And just kind of stamp it in here. And maybe one more. And then you can, you know, you can just continue it however you want to. It'll just kind of fade out. It's just so easy. So, okay, let's do the, uh, I'm looking at what I still have to do. Oh, the little girl, let's put her in. Let's put her in. She would go right here in the center. So you wanna keep her in a light area. So if you plan to use a silhouette, uh, be sure you leave some space uh, where it's pretty light. Don't try to stamp her you know, over anything that looks like this. And keep in mind the size. So, <clears throat> you know, she's, she's pretty big compared to this barn. So you don't wanna stamp her too close to the barn. You wanna stamp her right in between. See how tall the fence is? You know, that's a little too, that's a little taller than her. So she's gonna fit right here in between. That's a really good spot for her. So that's exactly where we're gonna put her. And I'm gonna use my, um, my positioner to make sure that I get her exactly where I want her to be. Now I'm gonna use uh, just a couple of colors on her. I'm not gonna stamp her all in black. I'm going to use some red on her shirt and just do the whole thing arms, hands, everything. Now, if you want to, you can uh, color everything separately. You totally can do that. But um, if you're doing this in a hurry and you wanna do it quickly, uh, just do it, just do it all the same, it doesn't matter. And then her hair. And then I'm just gonna stamp her in the corner so we can see exactly where she's going. And I think that's about right, right about there. And I'm gonna remove this now, and I'm gonna color it again because I wanna make sure that I get enough color on here so that um, she stamps right. So I'm gonna go ahead and color her again. Add this color back on, and I'm just using the blue, the blue and the red. You know, you don't need a lot of color uh, when you're doing these little scenes either. Okay. And now I'm going to stamp it in here. And there she is. I'm going to use my really, really tiny brush. So my number one, if I can see where I put it. Oh, here it is. So I'm gonna use my number one and just soften uh, the lines here. That will look make her look much, much more realistic. Including her little feet. And now we need a shadow under her. So I'm gonna take a little bit of blue and see where her foot is in the air. Now that doesn't need a shadow, only the one on the bottom. And then just a little bit here where her body is, just like that. Otherwise she won't look like she's, she'll look like she's floating. So you do have to add just some kind of little shadow onto there. And then let's do the, um, let's do the little dog. And where is he? Here he is. And I'm gonna use the uh, positioner with him as well. And just, I think I'll just use the brown. So this is the dark brown. And he looks, had him upside down. So I'm just gonna stamp him in the corner. 
just like that. And I can see where he's going to go. And he looks good right next to her. Perfect. And I'm going, I'm going to ink this again too. I just want to make sure I get enough color on here. Don't press too hard. Uh, that's probably the biggest thing. And you know what? Before you put this into your project, practice with it a little bit. Don't press too hard. You want to get, you want to see these tiny, tiny little areas. See how tiny that dog, the feet and the tail is on that dog. If you press too hard, you're going to get too wide of lines here. So just a very light, light um, touch. And he's up in the air. So his shadow is actually uh, just going to be right here. And then just, you know, just go over and be careful you don't make these lines. I wouldn't add any water to the feet, the paws, um, or the tail or the ears. Uh, because the second you make that too wide, it's not going to look realistic. So keep that in mind. Okay, one, uh, really one last thing to do, and that is to drag a little color across, um, across this, this little path or this little driveway. Um, it really uh, kind of makes it look, you know, a little more realistic, not just all wet, all white. And you're going to see those, you're going to see those shadows. Uh, the tree, you know, let's make a little shadow here for that tree. And then uh, the barn, we can add a little shadow in here. And I think we might be finished. You can go back in and just touch everything up. I always go back and just look at it again and just see if there's anywhere that I need to make an adjustment. Um, of course, um, I will need to sign it here, which I will do right now. I have to get used to writing 2021 now. So my first sample of 2021, if you would like to have this sample and this one, I'll, we'll choose two people. So here's the one that is the winter or the uh, mountain scene with the fir trees. If you would like to have this, just uh, comment, please. Yes, I would like to have it. And we'll put you in a drawing and we'll give these away. These are my first ones of 2021, you guys. So here we go. Let me, um, let me switch back over. <clears throat> let me switch back over. So I can see you guys. And let me know if you have any questions. What, um, what do you think about that? What do you think about the project? Do you wanna see more of those simple scenes? Uh, put that in there. Uh, comment if you want to have the sample. I'll give those away. Uh, someone mentioned that a long time ago, and I've been doing it ever since. So if I know you'd like it, I will be happy to give it to you. So there will always be tons more coming. <clears throat> so text that in the comments, and then uh, let me know what you think. And I will be back again next week. So we will have another tutorial on YouTube watercolor Wednesday and um, I hope you will tune in for that this video will stay archived on Facebook so you can come back and check that out and I'm just checking through the comments one more time to see if anybody has any questions and like I said I will go through these and um, and respond if you uh, if you have a question okay thanks you guys so much for joining me uh, we're looking forward to a great 2021, lots of new watercolor, lots of new tutorials. So I hope you will keep watercoloring and sending those away to people. Boy, do people need to be encouraged nowadays and sending something that you've painted and handmade for them, put it in a little frame or a card and give it away to someone. You will really make their day. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next week.